Blog Talk Radio, the world's largest online radio network. Okay, and you know, and that's been my big uh, pet peeve with this whole thing. You know, I've had so many say, "Well, do you see a dead bear in the woods?" And do you know, well, as often as I'm in the woods, no, I don't. But if Bigfoot's been around as long as uh, it's said that Bigfoot has been around. I would think, like you say, by now something should have been found, whether it be bones or uh, a body. I mean, you know, so I wonder, is there some intelligence to these creatures? So perhaps they take care of their dead or uh, maybe they're interdimensional? And that that uh, that is closer to what we're doing. That's what I talk about in uh, the Silent Invasion book. By the way, if anybody's interested in getting a copy because – we're not going to be able to get it as detailed as we like tonight. And the cases in there are probably some of the most fascinating and bizarre cases you'll ever read about. It's uh, my Silent Invasion book, Silent Invasion, the Pennsylvania UFO Bigfoot case book. And they, it's available uh, autographed through my website at stangordon.info or through Amazon. And uh, I think people will find it is a very, very fascinating read, and it will give you a different perspective on what we're dealing with. Absolutely, and uh, yeah, certainly. Give us a, a couple accounts uh, of of these cases. Well, look, before we get into some of the, the really weird stuff, let me give you another the, the classic case of UFOs and Bigfoot, and uh, okay. I'll just give you the, the basic part of the story. There's a lot more to it. We could talk for hours just about this one case, but uh, this goes back to October 25th of 1973, as all these cases are unfolding, and where our teams are responding around the clock, basically, to a lot of these incidents. And uh, and I can tell you about some of those incidents. They were just, it was an amazing time to live through, I can tell you. It was like living a science fiction movie, but it was really happening, and it, it was just an amazing time. But uh, October 25th of 1973, there was, there was a lot of UFO activity going on that day during the mo- early morning and you know, evening hours from different areas. But about 10.30 that night, I got a call from the state police barracks in Uniontown up in Fayette County, which historically Fayette County is a really hot area for all kind of weird stuff, and it still is. And even just recently, some of the cases we've had up there are really interesting. But year after year, we get a lot of Bigfoot activity up there. But anyhow, that night of October 25th, 73, the state trooper calls me. He had just came back from investigating this multiple witness UFO landing with two big foot creatures in the field at the same time. And talking to him, he was very credible. He also seemed himself somewhat uh, disturbed and uh, somewhat upset over what had happened. And he said to me, he said he thought there was a good chance that something was still up there in that pasture area, that he recommended we get a team up there right away to investigate it. And a, a key witness was with him at the barracks at that point, and I got to talk to him. And uh, it was already late, and we were quite a distance away, but uh, we we assembled our team. We, we got our equipment checked out, our radiation meters and our equipment together, and uh, we found our way up in that area in the early morning hours. And uh, But what we learned was that at about 9 o'clock that night in this rural community, about 15 people observed this this round spherical object about as big as a barn, bright red, about 100 feet off the ground, and slowly descending towards the pasture. And um, the main person, uh, this farmer's son and his wife were driving down to see his dad at his dad's farm where this was taking place, and he noticed this thing in the sky, and he went up to a neighbor's house to get a different vantage point of this thing. And uh, he and the neighbors watched this thing coming down, and uh, he decided they were going to go up to figure out what was going on. So he and two young boys, neighbor boys, decided to uh, go up in that pasture. Before he did, he went over to his dad's farm, grabbed a thirty odd six, uh, some ammunition, which included two tracers. And uh, as they're proceeding towards that pasture area down this farm lane, in the distance, the dogs are going crazy. They're hearing like a baby crying sounds in the distance getting louder as they got closer to the pasture. They hear like a high-pitched sound, and um, they make their way up towards the field, up towards the pasture. And when they get up there, the three of them are quite amazed because about 250 feet away, this object is on the ground or right above it. And this thing is now is, is bright white. It's not a complete sphere. It's like a half a hemisphere with a flat part to the ground. 
and uh, it's, a, it's a, like a big white dome, and it's illuminating the whole field and the whole area, and it's making this real high-pitched sound. And uh, the three of them are just sitting there in amazement. And as they're watching this thing, all of a sudden their attention is drawn to a, a barbed wire fence about 75 feet away. Along that fence, there's these two tall figures slowly walking one behind the other in their direction. Their first thought is, well, they must be bare. And then they realize, well, heck, this thing's the fence post is six feet tall. The one was around eight foot tall. The other was about seven foot tall. The, the biggest one's in the front. And these things are bipedal. They're, they have very long arms hanging down almost to the ground. They're covered with long, dark, matted hair. They have glowing green eyes. There's a funny smell in the air, like burning rubber. And these things are maybe making like a baby whining, crying sound. And they walk one behind the other. And the one boy is getting really upset, and they're yelling to the guy, shoot him, shoot him. And um, one of the boys actually just runs out of the field and runs back, back to the house. He's so upset. Uh, the fella f- fires his first shot, which is just a tracer. So it's just a flash of light. He fires that second tracer. And when he fires that second tracer, the largest of the two creatures makes like a whining, crying sound and reaches out as though to grab that tracer. And the moment it does that, the object in the, in the field vanishes. It doesn't take off. It just disappears. The light goes out. The sound goes out. It's gone visibly. And wow. the creatures at that point, they turn around slowly, start walking along the fence line back towards the woods. So at this point, he's firing live ammo into these things. And he said, I've been hunting all my life. I know I, I for sure hit the largest creature. He said, they kept looking back at him with those glowing green eyes just staring at him. And he said, I, I know I hit it. And... Uh, they showed no effect whatsoever, and uh, they decided they ran out of there and went back to the farmhouse and told the family what happened, took them to a neighbor's and called the state police. So about 45 minutes later, the trooper arrives, and he said, I'm here to investigate the flying saucer, and the witness just says, you know what, just forget about it. You probably think I'm nuts. And the trooper said, we had a report of two similar creatures last night up on one of the mountains, and I have to investigate. So they go up in the patrol car, up in the troop car, go up in the pasture, and what the trooper later told me was when they got up there, in the area where the object had been on the ground or right above it, the whole area was self-luminescent glowing, about 100 to 150 feet in diameter. He said it was bright enough that if he had a newspaper, he could have sat down within that glowing area and read the words from the newspaper from the light coming off of it. The animals wouldn't go anywhere near it. And uh, anyhow, the, the story goes on and on. They, they went back to the barracks. Uh, when they got there, both the trooper and the witness were taken to separate rooms and separately questioned. And after that, they they notified me. And the story actually gets deeper and deeper, stranger and stranger. And I, I have the whole story uh, in the Silent Invasion book, and it's most interesting. But there were other cases that really got even stranger. And one of the cases that gave us a clue to why we have no bodies occurred also in Fayette County in February of 74. And if you want to discuss that now, we can. Yes, sir. Okay, yeah, so, go ahead. Fe- yeah, February 6, 1974. Uh, if your listeners were alive at that time, around at that time, they'll remember there was a national trucker strike going on. There was gas rationing taking place. And on some of the highways in different parts of the country, there were shootings going on. So here in Pennsylvania, the state police and the National Guard were patrolling together. So in this situation, both the National Guard and the state police responded to this incident. I couldn't get gas the next morning, so I couldn't get up there until early the next morning because it was a pretty good distance away. But anyhow, what we learned was that uh, the story focused on a a person who lived in the woods all her life. This woman lived in this uh, little cabin home deep in the woods, and... uh, on this particular evening, she was sitting in the house, sitting, I think, in the kitchen, if I recall, and she was hearing, uh, like, something going through her garbage on the porch. She had some a little pile of garbage, like cans out there, and something was rattling the cans. And she had been having a problem with a uh, pack of wild dogs that had been coming through the area. So she figured these dogs might be back, and she was going to grab her, 
her shotgun and just fire over their heads and scare these dogs away. So she grabs her shotgun, loads up one chamber, and uh, she makes her way over to the door of the front porch. She uh, switches on the light that goes on outside. She opened the door and stepped on the porch. There weren't any dogs there, but just a few feet away in front of her was this large, hairy, Bigfoot-like creature. And she said to me, and I remember plainly, she, she never, ever called it a Bigfoot. She said, it looked like a great big hairy ape. And um, it had its arms raised up straight over its head. And her first thought was, this thing's going to lunge on me. So what does she do? She fires right into it, a few feet away with her shotgun. She said there's this bright flash of light as if you had a strobe on a camera. And the creature vanished in front of her eyes and disappeared. Now, her in-laws lived uh, about 100 feet away. They heard the gunshot. So they called to ask what happened, and she told them. So the son-in-law grabs his pistol and began to make his way up towards her place and told me that he was surrounded by what he said was four or five hairy people with eyes like coals of fire and began to randomly shoot at them, and he ran to her her home. At the same time, there's this glowing object with different colored lights, he said, like a big Christmas ornament hovering over the woods at the same time. Now, these people had lots of animals up there. And uh, by the time the state police and the, and the National Guardsmen got up there, it, was, it took a while to get up there. By the time they got there, whatever was there was gone. But I, I talked to an investigating officer, and he said it was just amazing to, to see how the animals were reacting. I mean, the horses and cattle were acting unusual, doing things they generally didn't do. The cats in the house were really upset. But he, these two had a number of dogs. And the trooper was telling me, it's just amazing. He said, one of these big dogs was in its cage. And, he, and it's, none of the dogs would bark or move or anything. And he said, he physically tried to pull one of those dogs out, and that dog wouldn't move or respond. And that dog should have ripped his arm off. And that dog wouldn't even make a, a motion. And he said, he didn't know what happened up there, but he said, something really strange happened, have these animals respond the way they did. So we got up there early the next morning. When we got up there, everything was back to normal. The dogs greeted us and barked a heck of a lot. And uh, we were out in the woods with a game officer from that county. He was out there with us searching for evidence. And uh, right in line, out in the woods, right in line of, of where the woman had shot this thing from the porch, we found the BB pattern in the trees out in the woods. And uh, so here was a case that highly suggested that we were dealing with something other than a normal flesh and blood animal, which may well be the reason why we don't have any bodies of these things. And that wasn't the other only case we had. We had other cases which suggested something similar was going on. And uh, I think this brings up a whole different aspect to the phenomena. Like I said, I keep an open mind with the Bigfoot phenomena, you know, but I've got to question, after so many reports year after year, why by now have we come up with more physical evidence or even a body? Exactly. And what you've just described makes total sense to me that uh, they're either uh, somehow connected to this UFO phenomena or they're interdimensional. I mean, uh, how they can just go into the woods, disappear, nobody could find them. I mean, it's not like they're tiny creatures. So they would have to have a pretty decent living space, I would think. So if they're real and i don't know have you seen enough evidence uh, in your investigations to say that uh bigfoot is real or ufos i don't have to ask i, I know those are real but what about oh, bigfoot yeah. i mean are you convinced yeah oh yeah i like i said i've investigated hundreds of, of bigfoot sightings in pennsylvania and i mean and year after year it goes on and i can go over some of the even some in our more recent years of some of the cases we had are just amazing and a lot of these reports are, are daylight reports at extremely close range. They're not cases where you could have a misidentification. I mean, a lot of the Bigfoot accounts you hear about, people see something in the dark a mile away. The, many of these cases are extremely close range, and many have, have occurred in daylight. And in some cases, you've got some type of physical evidence that helps to confirm the report. The question is, however, where do they come from and where do they go? I mean, we searched many mines and caves over the years where there were sightings going on. And these things may have been going in there temporarily, but there was never any evidence that they were staying in there. And we did have cases where people saw, saw them eating. Like, and they, the main diet we found years ago was mainly apples, corn, and berries. And even though we've had reports of them carrying deer over their shoulders, 
Uh, there are some cases where it suggests that they might eat, like, deer and turtle and other an small animals at times. Uh, we also know they seem to have a very big hatred for dogs for whatever reason. But of, of the many, many cases we've had, they're very curious of people. They sometimes have people. Uh, approach people fairly closely, but generally when they're seen, they, they take off. And as so many people have said to me, and hunters who have counted these things in the woods, if this thing really wanted to follow up and, and stop somebody, they could easily have done it. I mean, we've had Casey things chasing cars probably 40, 50 miles an hour. And, uh, I mean, just tremendous, just bizarre cases. And, uh, again, a lot of these cases we investigated within minutes to hours after they occurred. And just to see the emotion of the witnesses was quite amazing. That sounds amazing. Stan, hang on with us uh, for a moment. We've got a short break that we need to take here. Uh, everybody hang on with us, and we'll be back. And we'll take your calls, 347-989-1012. That is the number to call in about uh, UFOs and mysterious creatures. I'm Michael Vera. This is Late Night in the Midlands on the LNM Radio Network, we are still standing, standing together as intended. 347-989-1012, uh, make sure you press 1 so we know you want to get on the air. Welcome your phone calls, uh, absolutely. Uh, we have Stan Gordon, uh, who is our guest tonight, UFOs, Mysterious Creatures, uh, Bigfoot, something I have never been completely convinced about, but, however, I will say that, you know, it's possible. It is absolutely possible. There's a lot of accounts, and I've even heard people who said, oh, they come up and eat right out of my hand. Now, all that I'm not so sure about, but uh, I do love those commercials. Uh, uh, what do they call it? Uh, ticking off Sasquatch or whatever it is. And, uh, you know, he gets mad and throws them around. But, uh, you know, I wish that, you know, they would find a body. If they'd find a body, um, I would be more apt to believe that. Um, maybe this is. and it, The only way I guess I can explain it is if this is real and there is such thing as Bigfoot creatures, then they have to be interdimensional or they have to be involved somehow with the UFO phenomena. Maybe a hologram like somebody had mentioned. I don't know, but uh, there's something mysterious about it. People report it all the time. And I, I would imagine that some can be mistaken as, you know, uh, gorillas or whatever or you know, bears could be mistaken as them. But, you know, every video that I've seen so far seems to be a blurry-type video, uh, you know. And, you know, the only good one, I think, is the, uh, uh, I think it's the Garrison, it's called, uh, uh, video on that. And there's a lot of speculation about that, too. So, I don't know, maybe, maybe not. But, you know, that's what I like to do here on Late Night in the Midlands, cover everything. Uh, things that we don't have the answers to, things we might believe in or might not believe in. I like to talk about it all and try to get to the answers. It's not just about, uh, you know, I'm not here to save souls or save the world. I'm here to uh, bring on the best guests, best information, and let you decide because, you're, you know, you're all individuals. You have your own opinions. It's not for me to tell you what you should think. That's That's up to you. But anyway, so let's get back to it. And by all means, call in if you like. The website, latenightinthemidlands.com. Go on over, become a member, be informed. I'm Michael Vera, and, uh, again, my guest, Stan Gordon, and we're getting back to it now. And, uh, Stan, uh, somebody had asked me in the chat about man-wolf creature. Have you ever heard about a man-wolf creature? Uh, yeah, occasionally we do. And, in fact, I have an amazing incident that's on my website of a case that I investigated that happened, uh, no, actually it was November of last year, November 20th, up in uh, Troy, PA, it's up in Bradford County, and it, it's a really detailed report, very, very intriguing, and in fact, I'll be glad to go over some of the notes I have on it with you, it's uh, quite interesting. Sure. Okay. All right, this happened uh, November 20th of last year. But I didn't get the report on it. The guy didn't report it until April the 11th. And I talked to the man and finally had a chance uh, a while later to finally reach his uh, girlfriend who was with him that night. And uh, it was about 11.05 that night. They were driving down what they call Mud Creek Road, traveling west towards Highway 14 near Troy, PA. As they continued down the road, their attention was drawn to the left side of the roadway. 
And the man who was driving said he saw a movement and mentioned it to his friend. The woman thought that a naked man was crawling on the side of the road. That was her first impression in the dark. The, di- the driver slowed down, swerved his truck in the middle of the road, and directed the high beams of his headlights towards the subject. The driver stopped about 30 to 40 feet away. They realized this was not a person, but instead a creature that was crawling very low to the ground. And as they watched, the creature moved in a squatting position with its back completely straight, somewhat like the stance of a kangaroo. The arms of the creature were held tightly to its body. and What looked like long claws resembled the talons of an eagle were, eagle were visible. The claws were estimated to be 8 to 10 inches in length. One claw was shorter than the other three, and the creature had a very muscular body. The head of the beast appeared to be oversized and shaped like that of a wolf. At the top of its head were two pointed bat-like ears that looked to be about four to six inches long. The entire creature, uh, according to the man, was covered with dull, wrinkly, dark black skin. And he said he could see large canine-like teeth in its mouth. The eyes of the creature, he said, were about the size of a silver dollar and were shiny black. And he stated what was interesting was that even though he had the high beams directed at the creature, the eyes did not reflect at all. He said he looked over the body during the 12-second encounter and for some reason thought the creature should have wings, but there wasn't any. And he said it squatted, it was in the squatted position and appeared to be about five feet tall. At this point, the creature was in the left lane of the road, about one to two feet onto the pavement. And as they watched in amazement, the creature began to stretch its body. And he said at this point, the animal started to stand up on its back legs while also falling over onto its front feet. The driver said that this position, the creature seemed to be about six or seven feet tall. The animal fell over on all four legs. The witnesses observed that the front claws of the creature were now two feet across the front claw, yeah, were two feet across the center line of the highway, while the back feet remained one uh, to two feet from the edge of the road. And the creature then turned its head slightly to the right and looked towards their vehicle. The driver told me that it looked directly at them with a horrific expression, like it was panicked. And he said it it took a deep breath, and he he had the feeling that the creature didn't realize that it was being observed, and when it realized it was, it was like caught doing something. Once it realized it was being observed, it it leaned back slightly and then reached forward with its claws. The creature took one tremendous leap and cleared a seven-foot embankment and moved out of sight into the woods. The man estimated the leap was about 40 feet long. As it was in the process of leaping, it was perfectly straight and held its front claws forward. The legs as it was leaping were only slightly larger than broomsticks or about the size of a walking crane and were very long. Then, just a second after the creature was gone from sight, something else odd occurred. A large bird, possibly an owl, suddenly rushed at the passenger side window, almost hitting the glass. Then it took off and did not return. It happened so fast, they were unsure if it was an hour or not. But the witnesses said that the creature appeared to be changing form. The driver said its shape was nothing like when it was squatted. The woman stated to me that it shaped into another form. She thought it was a dark brown color and looked like a werewolf with a little back hair. She estimated that when it was leaping into the woods, she thought it stood about nine feet tall. She was reluctant to say it, but she said, I think it was a man changing into a werewolf. The man, after the experience, went on to the Internet to try to figure out what he saw and told me the closest thing he could describe would be a gargoyle but with no wings. And he said, I will never forget what we saw that night. It's a very, very detailed, very interesting report. That is amazing. That's uh, you know, I and you you watch these shows growing up. I watched The Werewolf and Dracula and all this. And uh, the more I get into this stuff, I find out that it's not just a story that people actually claim to have uh, seen these things. And uh, one person listening says perhaps a product of Plum Island, and <laughs> I wouldn't doubt that at all. Uh, Stan, uh, let's take a call. We've got uh, Anthony in Wisconsin. Anthony, welcome to Late Night in the Midlands, my friend. Thank you, Michael. Great to be here. It's got a nice, refreshing feeling to it. I tell you that. It feels good to be here. Uh, good evening, good evening, Stan. Uh, good evening. Got, yes, sir. I got two questions, and I'll take your answers off off there off there. 
Um, the first one, you know, you said Pennsylvania has the most sightings of UFOs and stuff. Is that correct in the United States? I don't believe it's 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 probably up there with it, probably within the top five or so, five or ten. But and it's always been one of the most active in the country. But uh, you know, I, I think the problem is I don't think anybody can say for sure because there's never been and probably never will be one clearinghouse that has all the reports. It's impossible because so many groups over the years have gotten reports, and today there are so many individual groups and individuals out there taking reports. There's no one central clearinghouse that really give you accurate numbers with that information. But Pennsylvania has always been one of the most active historically. Okay. I guess I won't take you, take it off there. My next question is, if I'm not mistaken, is it Pennsylvania like the highest and mysterious disappearances of people? In the that state? I do not I know. I understand it. that there is a gentleman who's done a lot of research on that. I, I can tell you that it, it's not an area where I would have hardly any such information on because it's not of all the years I've been doing this, it's not a it's not been a trait or something that has come to my attention. Uh, very rarely over the years, it's been years and years and years that we hear occasional stories like that, but can't confirm them. And it's not something that uh, I would have any direct information on, personally. Sure. I think it might be, or it's not close, because, you know, with the Bigfoot sightings and, and all these UFOs, and there's people that are mysteriously disappearing and they've never been found again. You know, and then now we have, uh, you know, these different dimensions. I'm thinking people are accidentally or these creatures are popping in and out of these dimensions, you know, and you just never see them again. Well, the strange creature reports are indeed very interesting, and we've been seeing quite a, a lot of these things in the last year. So, I mean, this last year been very active here in Pennsylvania with very weird and we're not talking just about Bigfoot sightings. I mean, and I can go over some of these reports with you. We've had this this large winged humanoid creature being reported up in Butler County, which is very interesting. I was the one that, was, with the that asked the question about the wolf, uh, the man wolf. That was me that asked that question. Okay. And yeah. uh, we had what appears to be a man report, what it sounds like a dragon sighting up in Fayette County, which we mentioned a very active area along the Chestnut Ridge. That happened several months ago. Um we get a lot of reports of what we call Thunderbird reports, reports of these giant birds with these massive wingspans. And, oh, yeah. and of course, just like with UFOs, there are misidentifications. Sometimes people just see unusually large birds, and it's very difficult to judge their height and distance. But some of the cases we have, again, are very, very close up range in situations where they can measure the wingspan. And, I mean, we're talking wingspans from 10 to over 20 feet across. And uh, some of these cases are just very, very amazing what's going on. And there's been a variety of other type of creatures, too. Black Panther sightings uh, is another thing we get reports of. And we've had several reports recently, very detailed, close-up Black Panther reports, which, of course, in this part of the country, scientifically, they've never existed, but there's been a long history of them. And with all these creatures, they Mark come Man. and they go. Yes. Mark Man as well. Yes. In fact... Uh, I'm speaking uh, next weekend at the Mothman Festival in West Virginia. Wow. That's pretty broad. Well, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Michael. And uh, great Thank show. you very much, Anthony. Well, thank great you. Show. I thank appreciate you. it. Have a good night. Bye you now. too. Goodbye. Um, yeah, you know, the Thunderbird. Now, that's something I'm, I, I take a little interest in because... Uh, a while back, I was doing this show on uh, a local station here in Columbia, South Carolina, over at WOIC, and uh, my screener uh, and friend at the time, uh, we had gone out for a break uh, during one of the show breaks, and we seen something going through the sky. It almost looked shadowish. Um, I mean, but it, it looked like it had wings and a body, and it was huge, and it was flying, just gliding through the sky. And it was not no airplane. It wasn't a, uh, uh extraterrestrial craft or anything like that. It was really dark and just flying through the sky. And to this day, we thought it might have been the Mothman, but maybe it's not. Maybe Or maybe they're both related. 
when these giant bird reports, there, there are several different types. Some of them are just extremely huge birds with, I mean, just massive wingspans. We're talking about the size of a small aircraft. In some cases, uh, they're more bat-like uh, reported, gigantic, but more bat-like in appearance. And others have come to us and said these things look prehistoric, what they saw, almost like pterodactyls and pterodons. And uh, the thing is, with all these strange creature reports, and I'll tell you about some other ones, they're here one time and they're gone. They appear and they disappear. They're active in the area for a short period of time, just like with the Mothman reports of the late 1960s. They come and they go. The Chupacabra reports uh, down in the Carolinas back in the uh, when was it? The 80s. We had the Lizard Man reports down there. I was going to ask you about that. Now that's something I've seen on the news here. Uh, I don't know, probably a couple of years ago. Uh, there's a sheriff in a town here um, where it was widely reported about this lizard man, and he claims that his sheriff uh, patrol car got ripped apart by this thing. And uh, I mean, they even showed the car; it was it had claw yeah. marks, teeth marks. I, and, if I, I mean, recall, there sheriff. were like two. I think there was some more recent episodes down there in recent years, and I think the main outbreak. And I, I have to go through my files, but I think it was back in the uh, in the eighties. Because I remember the news media down there contacted me about uh, those cases, and uh, but again, there's so many strange things. And again, the, the suggestion is that these things, whatever they are, come in and out of our physical reality. They're physical. They're non-physical. They can be physical. They can leave physical evidence and physical traces. Then they suddenly disappear and they're gone. And that's what it seems to be happening with some of the Bigfoot cases as well. Yeah, and uh, you know, and that's the amazing part. And there are there are so many different accounts of, of these uh, odd creatures, um, you know, and yet nobody can locate any of them. So you know, you got to wonder what's going on. Is there, you know, again, I go to that interdimensional thing. Uh, you know, are we are, are there dimensions crossing, and that's why we see them? You know, it's I don't know if we'll ever get the answers to this. What do you think? Well, we we may not. I, I've said for years and years the phenomena is so strange it protects itself, and uh, <laughs> this it goes on year after year. And after your break, I'll tell you about the strange winged humanoid creature that's been reported north of Pittsburgh uh, last year and since then, and supposedly in more recent weeks as well. Oh, okay. Well, I'm looking forward to hear about that. So why don't we take this break then? And uh, Stan, we'll come back and. And we'll cover that. Blog Talk Radio, where millions of hosts and listeners gather. 